كفروا أن السماوات والأرض كانت رتقا ففتقناهما وجعلنا من الماء كل شيء حي أفلا Constellations, the product of our very beginning that we witnessed today as a big bang 
was previously confined to singularity, inheriting the dimensions of time by the will of our Creator to nurture the balance of multiplex galaxies in our universe was thus necessitated. surpassing millions of newly born galaxies and swaying across the Milky Way, among which our own planet was just a tiny contribution. It was blazingly hot at the time. Comprising immense smoke with volcanic eruptions in the premature atmosphere. Then Allah created the earth in two days. Fencing and firming its ground by placing huge and gigantic mountains. Signifying to connect and stabilize the foundations of our planet. Then he blessed it and measured therein the sustenance for his dwellers in a matter of just four equal days. Completing six days in total on our planet, then he directed himself towards the sky when it was partially in a state of smoke. Perhaps considering the expansion of our universe, for which Allah asserted to the skies and our planet, Come, both of you willingly or unwillingly. They both accepted and said, We come with you willingly. Then he, the Magnificent, rose upwards to create and split the sky into seven. Completing and furnishing all that it contains to its extremes. Including all of its affairs. in just two days. And adorned our nearest sky with stars, acting as a guidance and beauty as a lamp.
the jinns created by the smokeless vial were engaged in shedding blood on the planet. The news reached the creator who is beyond the lot tree from where four rivers originate two leading to our earth and the other two leading towards the heavens and he decided to create a first human kind then Allah caused Adam السلام, and his wife to dwell happily in paradise, enjoying everything to their fill, simultaneously warning them not to approach the one tree. But Satan deceived them. led them to approach that station and eating from its fruits of which they were prohibited but raising the anger of Allah for which they repented and were forgiven with a condition Descend both of you from the heavens as enemies to each other for what you have committed you will find in the earth a residence and provision for your appointed stay How closely have you ever noticed in the hadith of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam explaining to us which day it was when Adam, Jibril and Hawa alayhi salatu wasallam were descending towards our planet They were approaching closer and the Saturn also arrived as an enemy till the day of judgment. It is there when the story of humanity begins on our planet. On which day did Adam alayhi salatu salam entered in the paradise? The answer lies in the Google Earth project, slide number 14. After that we will begin the chapter 1 of nations and messengers sent towards them in each era. It is reported from Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said the best day on which the sun has risen is Friday. On it Adam السلام, was created and on it he entered the paradise and on it he was expelled from it.
Adam alayhi salatu wassalam was sent to subcontinent from where he traveled back to Bakka. Then Habil alayhi salatu wassalam was born, followed by Sheath alayhi salatu wassalam. Then Idris alayhi salatu wassalam in the city of ancient Iraq. Then Nuh alayhi salatu wassalam in the southern Iraq. Then Hud alayhi salatu wassalam in Ahl Aqaf region near to the border of Oman and Yemen in Hadr al Maut. Then Salih alayhi salatu wassalam in Al-Hijr, Northern Hijaz. Then Ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam in the city of Ur in Iraq. Then Lut alayhi salatu wassalam in the Jordan River plain considered to be the lowest point on earth after his nation was punished by Jibreel alayhi salatu wassalam. Then Ishaq alayhi salatu wassalam in Hebron al-Khalil. Then Ismail alayhi salatu wassalam in the city of Bakka. Then Yaqub alayhi salatu wassalam in Asham region. Then Yusuf alayhi salatu wassalam who migrated towards Egypt. Then Shu'ib alayhi salatu wassalam in Midian city of Saudi Arabia these days. Then Ayyub alayhi salatu wassalam and Tulqifl alayhi salatu wassalam in Damascus environment. Then Musa alayhi salatu wassalam migrating from Midian from Egyptian Sinai towards Memphis in Egypt. Then Harun alayhi salatu wassalam Then Da'ud alayhi salatu wassalam in Palestine state. Then Suleiman alayhi salatu wassalam in Palestine state. Then Ilyas alayhi salatu wassalam in the city of Baalbek. Then Yasa alayhi salatu wassalam followed by Yunus alayhi salatu wassalam in the city of Nineveh in Iraq. Zakaria alayhi salatu wassalam in Palestine state followed by Yahya alayhi salatu wassalam. Then Isa alayhi salatu wassalam in the city of Galilee of Bethlehem. And at last the seal of all the prophets, the last and final messenger of Allah, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, was born in the city of Bakka. Each prophet had their unique challenges and hardships when it comes to significant needs to migration in order to preach the word of Allah. These collections are narrated from the Holy Quran and that there is no nation on planet but Allah has sent a warner towards them. 
For instance, Prophet Ibrahim والسلام, left his hometown Iraq and traveled towards the city of Aleppo. Passing by various cities across his way to the Damascus. Then Jerusalem. Then Hebron. And then advancing towards Egypt in Memphis. From where Ibrahim, Hajra and his son Ismail alayhi salatu wassalam ajma'in set out on a journey towards the holy city of Bakka as per the instructions of Allah and then went back alone to the city of Hebron covering almost 4,471 kilometers. Inhabitants of the same city in Iraq even forced Nuh alayhi salam in the past to ask Allah for migration. To that, Holy Quran clearly dictates the halting of ship at Mount Judei, except Mount Ararat, mistakenly taken as a second opinion by the historians, as mentioned in Surah Al Hud. In conclusion, the Great Flood initiated in Iraq. Passing by southern Mesopotamia and halting towards the mountainous region of Judea in Turkey. Witnessing the cold night when Musa alayhi salam saw a fire from a distance while migrating with his family from Al Bada al Madian towards the Memphis in Egypt. While approaching towards the fire, he found a tree from where our Lord spoke to him for the very first time and was blessed by the prophethood of Allah. Then he continued the rest of his journey, returning to his family as a prophet of Allah in the very next morning. On the other hand, in the era of the first Roman Emperor Augustus, an acting king Herod was appointed towards the Palestine state, who ordered the killing of every newborn in the region of Galilee in Bethlehem. It was then when Jibreel came down to our planet, casting the spell by the will of Allah and causing Maryam alayhi salatu wassalam to be pregnant with Isa alayhi salatu wassalam in the region of Bethlehem of Galilee. Due to the strict orders of King Herod, it wasn't easy for Maryam alayhi salam and her child to stay at that place and that moment. So they decided to migrate towards Jerusalem in order to save the future prophet and her beloved child. On the other hand, animosity spread by the Jews of that time from their knowledge of Torah and fear of young child to be the future great wisdom and prophet compelled the innocent Maryam alayhi salam to migrate with his newborn to even farther destinations. Her migration towards Egypt started from Egyptian Sinai, from the direction of Pelusium, southwards, which is currently as a city of Palusa between Al Arish and Port Said that is lying 317 kilometers from Jerusalem. Then they traveled to the city of Basta near the city of Zagazig 
1112 kilometers southwest, the capital of Eastern Province. There a spring began to flow for them, after they were treated unkindly, and the residents denied the water for her child. Then they moved southwards 52 kilometers to a small town called Mustarud, where they sought shade beneath a tree, and a spring began to gush where Maryam salam washed her son, hence known as Al-Mahama. A church was built in this city, known as Church of the Virgin of Mustarud. Then they traveled backwards 40 kilometers northeast towards the city of Belbis and sought shade beneath a tree that even carries their name until now and is venerated by the Christians. Then they went northwest 66 kilometers to the city of Minya Juna, which is nowadays also known as Menyat Semanud. Then they migrated across the Nile River, that lies 1.7 kilometers to the west of Samanud city and then to the village of Shajara and Neem, and to al matla and headed westwards 31 kilometers across Sebunatic branch of the Nile, and reached near the village of Saka Ayus, opposite to the Wadi and the monks. Then they headed southwards 112 kilometers towards the city of Al Shams, Al Mataria, and sought shade beneath the tree, and until now known as a tree of Virgin Mary. Then they traveled subsequently southwards. 16 kilometers towards the old Cairo, al Fustat region, and lived for several days in the caves, now to be found in the church of St. Sergius, and then set out for the city of Memphis, now known as the Meet Rahina, that lies 5.7 kilometers from the previous city of al Fustat. This city of Memphis is near to the pyramids of Saqqara, as can be seen. Then the noble family traveled to Upper Egypt, as it is higher in altitudes, it means southwards, in the boat sailing across the Nile River, 157 kilometers away from the previous destination, towards Abai Isus, in the city of Bani Mazar, where the house of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam can be seen. From here onwards, the journey of noble family continued southwards, or in other words to the Upper Egypt, from the course of the River Nile, and approaching towards the coast of Jabal al-Kaf, also known as Jabal at that lies 30 kilometers from eastern coast of Bani Mazar.
keep in mind. This river Nile is also considered to be one of the four rivers originating from the heavens, from the Lord Tree. And this is witnessed by the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, when he was raised above the Sidrat al Muntaha. And then he was given three bowels, one containing the milk and the other honey, and the third one containing the wine. He والسلام, took the bowl containing the milk and drank it. It was then said to him, You and your followers will be on the right path of Islam. The significance of the river Nile can also be witnessed throughout the civilizations who dwelt near the Nile in different ages. For instance, the great suffix of Giza near the Memphis and Serapium of Saqqara in the lower Egypt in Memphis, Tal Imarna in Middle Egypt and the Valley of the Kings in Upper Egypt and the Theban Tomb in the Upper Egypt and at last the Elephantine Island Pyramid, Upper Egypt near the Nubia. Then the noble family headed across the Nile River towards the eastern side of Ashmunim, approaching in the center of the city of Malawi that lies 66.6 kilometers from the previous destination of Jabal at And here, they stayed for a few days. Then they went towards the town of Files, known as Dairut al-Sharif, which is 23 kilometers southwards. Then continued southwards direction for at least 16 kilometers. And they reached the city of al qusiyah Then towards the west, towards the city of Myra or Mira. From here she traveled backwards, it means eastwards, crossing the Nile River again and stayed at Jabal al Qasqum for around about six months and is considered to be the last destination towards the Upper Egypt of the noble family as considered by the monastery of al muharraq After this, Maryam والسلام, settled in the land of Kinana in Egypt. And after the death of King Herod in Palestine state, she returned to the city of Nazareth when the child Isa alayhi salatu was salam was seven years of age. This city of Nazareth is located near to the Bethlehem of Galilee where Isa alayhi salam was born and is named as Nasara or Nasarians. In the Holy Book of Quran, and when the age approached to the twelve of Isa alayhi salatu was salam, he was about to prostrate in front of Allah as per the instructions of the Torah. Hence, the noble family set back again towards Jerusalem towards Bayt al-Maqdas and prostrated in front of Allah.
The child grew up living a life of ease and a learning wisdom. After the indispensable and unmatched hardships made by his mother, covering almost 2,460 kilometers in order to protect her child, until he والسلام, became the Prophet of Allah. and was rising up towards the skies by Allah and will return at the end of times.